Have you ever had the opportunity to see someone possessed right in front of you? Twisted hands, contorted fingers, a hunched body, and a deep voice are characteristics of people who exhibit the presence of demons. In some churches, it's even normal to see pastors talking face to face with these entities. Many don't believe in these manifestations and think it's just a show to get attention. But is that really true? Would it be possible for someone to talk to the devil face to face? Furthermore, would it be possible for the evil spirit to enter into an animal or even our beloved pet? In today's video, we will analyze everything the Word of God says about it and reveal an extraordinary case of a conversation the demons had with Jesus. But before we begin, I want to ask you to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell, because every day I want to help you understand the Bible in a very simple and practical way. All right, let's get started. The Bible tells us that demons are actually fallen angels who serve Satan to destroy people's lives. They are wicked, filthy, manipulative, and to make matters worse, the Bible says they are around us seeking opportunities to attack us. This means that wherever you go, there may be a demon presence around. And even though you can't see or touch them, the spiritual world exists and is full of these beings ready to cause harm and destruction in people's lives. But if we can't see or touch them, can we talk to them? Some people are unsure about cases of conversations with demons. They find it very strange that they speak our language. But the truth is, the Bible reveals that demons can manifest themselves in conversations through possessed individuals, and there is no language barrier in that sense. They do understand our language, just as they can speak to people in a common dialogue. And such a case happened with Jesus when he was passing through a city called Gandhara, Look at what happened when Christ encountered two demon-possessed men from that region. When he arrived at the other side in the region of the gatherings, two demon-possessed men coming from the tombs met him. They were so violent that no one could pass that way. What do you want with a son of God? They shouted. Have you come here to talk to us? Before the appointed time, these demons started a conversation in the language that Jesus understood. But why did this contact happen? The first thing we can notice is that this conversation started because the demons knew who Jesus was and the power he had over them. They were so uncomfortable with Christ's presence that they questioned if they were facing their end. The Bible reveals to us in the book of Revelation that the final sentence of Satan and his demons is an eternal condemnation of torment in the abyss. It's no wonder that the demons trembled in the presence of Jesus as they thought their final hour had come and had no other option but to be cast out. Look at what is written in verse 30 and beyond some distance from them. A large herd of pigs was feeding the demons, begged Jesus, if you drive us out, send us into the herd of pigs. He said to them, go. So they came out and went into the pigs, and the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and died in the water. Notice that even before Jesus said anything, the demons already knew they would be cast out. They knew that when Jesus arrives somewhere, all evil withdraws. And the Bible shows us that there is no difficult confrontation or complicated battle for Jesus. He was tempted in the desert and came out victorious because his power and authority are incomparable. And that's exactly why Jesus didn't even have a dialogue with those demons. There was no conversation. They were the ones who actually tried to negotiate their own punishment. But you might be wondering now, but pastor, why did the demons ask to enter the pigs? Many believe that demons live in a secret and distant place. Others say they live in hell and only occasionally come to wander around the earth. But the truth is, according to the Bible, after Lucifer's expulsion from heaven, he and a third of the angels lost their celestial home. The Bible reveals to us, for example, in the book of Job, that Satan was roaming the earth. And this means that there is no fixed dwelling place for demons, and they hate the fact that they have lost it. And for this reason, they are always looking for someone, for a new habitation, a new place to stay. But now let's go back to talking about the demon-possessed men who spoke with Jesus. Those demons already knew they would no longer possess those two individuals that Jesus had certainly come to bring liberation. And it was at that moment that the demons turned and asked to enter the pigs so that at least they could have a place to stay. The Bible does not tell us the exact number of demons that possessed those people, but it's possible to say it was a legion with many demons. 
After all, if they wanted to possess a herd of pigs, they were certainly in great numbers. And after Jesus drove them out, they immediately ran to possess those animals. But then something happened that they didn't expect. The herd of pigs ran towards a cliff and threw themselves into the sea, all drowning. Some believe that the pigs ran under the influence of the demons themselves who wanted to kill them. But the truth is that the intention of these beings is to cause pain and destruction. Killing them immediately wouldn't make sense, and they would lose their dwelling place again. However, they could not foresee this action of the animals. We can say that Jesus was aware of what would happen and that it was a sign for the demons of their future judgment. After all, they were sentenced to suffer eternally in an abyss. And look at this interesting fact. The only word Jesus said to them was go. And that shows us the great power that Jesus has over them. Jesus is not in a power struggle with the devil. He is much stronger and more powerful with just one command, one word. That whole legion of demons no longer remain there. Now I want to go back to the initial question with you. Would it be possible for this to happen nowadays? Can demons talk and even make requests? The answer is yes. Demons continue to seek those who they can cause harm to, and cases of possession are still very common today. However, talking to these demons through possessed individuals is something we should pay close attention to. In my opinion, we should follow Jesus' example and only execute the command of expulsion, exactly as he did in the book of Mark chapter 16. Jesus said that in his name we can cast out demons, and that is the key. When we are faced with such a situation, remembering that an evil spirit does not want to leave right away, it will insist it will give trouble to leave. This doesn't mean we have little faith. It means that the enemy is persistent. He does not want to abandon that body, that precious life, which is why we need to persevere, because he cannot resist the name of Jesus, and many people tell me. But pastor, I've seen people praying, and the demon didn't come out. Brothers and sisters, the truth is, that we need to use the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Faith alone is not enough at this moment. You have to use your spiritual armor and the weapon of attack is the Word of the Lord. So you have to say to the devil, it is written in Mark chapter 16, Jesus said in my name they will cast out demons. So Satan, in the name of Jesus, I command you to come out of this body now, do you understand? But as I said to you, a conversation with a demon can happen as long as you are focused on expelling that demon and not chatting, not asking questions about the spiritual world, or even trying to convert the demon, because that's not going to happen. The Bible says that Satan's end has already been decreed because repentance was not found in his heart. And they do not believe in Jesus as Lord and Savior. So don't think they'll turn away from evil. Don't think they'll change their minds. Their only purpose is to deceive and manipulate. They are dirty and only cause destruction. So expel in the name of Jesus. And that's it. And going back to the story of the two demon-possessed men from Ghidorah, another point we can observe is Jesus' power of restoration. Some scholars and historians believe that the two demon-possessed men were a couple, a man and a woman. But when Jesus came, life came with him. And after the demons were expelled, the supposed couple was free from any bond, and they received the chance to start their lives anew without the influence of evil. And that's exactly what happens when a person accepts Jesus as their Lord and Savior. When we open the doors for Christ to enter, everything that was dirty and unclean is cleaned and transformed. Jesus comes to bring liberation to the captives and oppressed. Amen. The book of Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. They do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. And that means that when we obey His word and live a life of holiness, there is freedom and great power over us. No legion of demons can stand before someone who has Jesus in their heart. And continuing that passage from Matthew chapter 8, which talks about the pigs. Something very interesting is written here. Look. Those tending the pigs ran off, went into the town and reported all this, including what had happened to the demon-possessed men. Then the whole town went out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they pleaded with him to leave their region. Look at this, brothers and sisters, how the human heart is, even after Jesus liberated those two people. The residents of that region chose to reject Christ because of the loss of the pigs. That is, they gave more attention to the material goods that were lost, 
than to the miracle of liberation that manifested for those two people. And this shows us that the same thing happens today. How many miracles has God done in people's lives? But the world prefers to continue with closed eyes, holding on to material treasures, believing that they are making the right choice. And I have no doubt about one thing. There are many people today who are possessed, but do not manifest themselves, because the demons prefer to stay hidden without appearing, only causing destruction. People in addictions, in sexual pleasures, and making people continue in error without them realizing it. And then if they die like this without Jesus, unfortunately, they will be condemned eternally. Therefore, my dear brother and sister, pay close attention to how you have been walking. See if you are on the path of Jesus or on the path of darkness, and don't let any demon imprison your heart and soul, and know that if your heart is filled with the light of the Holy Spirit, the devil cannot touch you. Okay, and answering one last question, demons can indeed enter pets. This is because animals are more sensitive to the spiritual world, and the devil can certainly take advantage of that. Okay, but you can pray there in your home, intercede for everything and everyone around you, and God will honor your faith. Okay, if you like this, I ask you to click on like, and do not forget to watch this video. Let's instruct people according to the word of the Lord. Okay, God bless you. A big hug.